Hello and welcome to Grain. My name is Chris and today we're going to talk about home scanning. Okay, so if you're anything like me, uh, you don't have a dark room, but you still want to enjoy all the benefits of shooting on film and living a hybrid dual lifestyle of sharing those film photographs on the internet. Turns out it's a slightly bigger problem than I was initially anticipating because finding a quality scanner that was in my budget that offered the quality, but also some semblance of speed was things that I was trying to weigh out. So I found myself doing a lot of research trying to figure out what scanner fits my need. Phase one, the Pacon. If you do any digging around online, the Pacon scanner is the number one favorite for home scanners. There are a couple problems that exist with that scanner. They're incredibly hard to find. When you find them, they're incredibly expensive. I didn't feel comfortable spending that amount of money on a scanner, knowing that my odds were, were fairly poor. So I went a different route. So if you see back here, this is my Plus Tech scanner. It's the 8200i series. As far as quality goes, it's pretty dang good for scanning 35s, but it's also one of its downfalls. It only scans 35. Um, so if you are a 120 shooter or anything larger, then sorry, this is not gonna work for you. But that's not my only scanner. I also have the Epson V550, which scans 35 millimeter and also has the ability to scan um, 120. I haven't really messed around with 120 yet, but that's the scanner that we'll be using when we get into that. So why two? Well, I started out with the Epson, which is down below my desk, but this is not my favorite scanner. Um, the advertised range of it as far as optical quality is really, really good. But when you actually understand the math behind that equated optical resolution, and then you take it for the size of a 35 millimeter negative, you're getting an effective, roughly an effective megapixel range of around two to three megapixels for a 35 mil scan. So not that great. This I like to use for scanning in low res um, catalog images. I use Lightroom as sort of a digital contact sheet in which I use to cross-reference to the physical negatives, and I'll do a separate video on that so you can see my methods with that. The Plus Tech 8200i, those are scans that I use if I want a high quality digital print. So that's the sole use for the Plus Tech. So let me show you a couple of the things that I use when I scan all the time, and uh, we'll go into some of the prep work that I do uh, when I scan negatives. So scanning at home, there's some basic things that you wanna have, but there are also things uh, that apply to scanning, but are also very helpful to use in other areas of your film photography journey. So here are a few. Cotton gloves, these are great for not putting all of your DNA and signature oils all over the film which will then lead to dust um, sticking. And I seriously, I've got, I've got negatives that I've scanned that have got my thumbprint across somebody's face. In fact, if I can find the frame, I'll show it to you right now. Uh, that's my friend Jeff, and that's his um, face covered up by my um, ignorance. <laughs> um, I bought these size small on Amazon. I'll send a link. I had to put a little cut in where the thumb goes to make them fit a little better, so. It's not all gone to waste. Um, alcohol, the higher percentage that you can find in your local drugstore or grocery store is better. Um, these are little cotton swabby things that are used as makeup remover pads. You can see all of that fuzz and junk. That's not good. Look at that. That's not what you want stuck all over your negatives. Look, you can see all this particulate in the air. Looks like Indiana Jones movie. So this is what you want. You want something that is lint free and will clean the film and not reintroduce more particulate. 
Um, a little rule of thumb about applying alcohol and cleaning the film. The first pass cleans the film, the second pass reintroduces everything that you just cleaned off. So don't get overzealous. And here is just some standard cotton swabs and then a um, can of air. I'll just give a quick pass on the top and bottom as well as the glass or sensor if you have access to it. Let me take you onto the computer now and I will show you the process in which I do um, preview scans and as well as the adjustments that I do to the, um, to the raw negative. So let's go do that now. Okay, so here we are in Silverfast. I just did a preview scan of the image that we're gonna be working with today. So um, starting up at the top left, the first thing I do is make sure that the file naming and file destination are set to the right name and location respectively. Uh, I use a reverse date naming structure and this also correlates with the um, archiving and negative cross-reference that I mentioned earlier and we'll be doing a separate video on that. Um, and for this, uh, for sake of example, I would keep it low around 1600. It works well for digital distribution. With Negfix, I've experimented with um, popping in the respective stocks in which Negfix will try to um, uh, use the profile for that film stock to apply the appropriate um, exposure and color cast removal and that sort of thing. I have not found anything that I'm completely happy with or that I have been able to find consistent results with. So as a result, I select other in the film category and I select it as monochrome. That makes sure that the uh, color cast is removed. HP5 has sort of uh, the emulsion is kind of a purpley color and that comes through on scans if you don't tell it that you want it scanned monochrome. And then an unsharp mask. If I was going straight from here to the internet or to social media, I generally would apply um, just an auto sharpness as a way to um, crisp up the edges and just make things nice and crispy. But if I were printing this for high resolution uh, or scanning this for a high resolution print, I would not apply sharpening now, I would apply that last. So in here, this is pretty much all I would do. Just scan our nice, clean, straight ahead negative. So I'm gonna scan this. Okay, so our scan is just finished up. I will open it up here in the finder. And I'm just gonna open this up in Photoshop. From here, I would just do some basic cloning and cleaning up of any little marks that I find, bits of hair. I don't like to knock out too much of the characteristics, but I don't want anything that's like particularly distracting also. So this is the basic um, methods that I would use in cleaning up a negative if it were going out for printing or um, for social media distribution. That's the basic scan. Okay, so that's it for today. That's my scanning process. Um, it's not perfect for me and I'm not completely happy with it, but it's the best option for me at the moment. So I'd love to know what you guys are doing as far as home scanning goes. So drop me a comment on the video. i uh, love to start a conversation about it. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I would invite you to do so and would be appreciative if you did so. And just give this video a nice thumbs up if you liked it, enjoyed it, or got something out of it. It helps out a lot. So thanks very much for watching Grain. As always, I'm Chris, and I'll see you next time.